That's not it. That's not it. We got a trailer and a bike. That's not it. I didn't know y'all were bringing back on a trailer. I didn't know either. Just think about the Daniel mobile. It's pretty sick. Very, it's very Daniel. Yeah, it is. How's it broken, Daniel? The rear sprocket. There's oh, yeah. Five bolts that hold it on. Three of them have been sheared off. Oh. The two are loose. It's like if you just removed a lot of your lug nuts. Yeah, it's it's pretty much like riding with two lug nuts. Did you even get to ride it? Oh, yeah, it's in there. Yeah, yeah. I rode it down there. on it he's gonna come back and be like damn i want one of these <laughs> <laughs> yeah i, I love i like cruisers just because they're so comfortable and they make like just as much power as like a 600 sport <laughs> that thing is so loud god This my, this my shit, oh tell her get off my dick This my, this my shit, oh tell her get off my dick Digi dash, nitro gas, time is passing Quick, 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 I just want tonight to last Life go fast, it tick, 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 tick Here we are a few weeks later and the bike is still here, hasn't even been touched. What you saw right there is the only time I have ever ridden it. So the current situation with this bike is that there are three of five sprocket bolts in the back that are currently, actually, they're all missing. The two that are left over are pretty loose in there. So check this out. Oh yeah. See that? Can you hear that? That is not supposed to be able to move at all. But we're gonna ride it home and we're gonna start taking this thing apart and getting it back together. Cause it's about time that this thing gets some love. Damn, I didn't even notice that before. There's a digital RPM gauge right there. It just literally displays it. So it's idling right now at like 1100 RPM. This is by far one of the coolest bikes I have ever ridden. So if you don't know much about highballs, Victory actually went out of production in I think 2017, something like that. So all the bikes that you see are no longer in production. But this bike in particular is the 2014 Victory highball. It's got like a 1730 cc engine, something like that. It's a V-twin, about nine and a half to one compression, which is pretty decent for an engine that size. Uh, my old Yamaha Warrior, which I had at the beginning of this channel, that one was also, I think it was like a 1681 cc or something like that. I don't know for sure, but it was a, it was very comparable in power. Anyways, we're about to ride this thing home and get started working on it. This bitch is loud very loud and it's pretty awesome honestly i wouldn't have it any other way let's get rolling wow this is interesting this is probably one of just the most like big dick energy bikes i've ever ridden on like if you ride this around town you're gonna be heard and seen and good god the ape hangers on it from factory are just it's pretty funny and it's awesome and it leans pretty good too. So far, my first impressions with the bike is the fact that it is like surprisingly nimble because this bike is very heavy. But for the bike being so heavy, I'm like really, like you can, you can literally just flick this thing. It's super impressive. I like to compare this bike back to my old Yamaha Warrior, the 1700, because that one was more of a drag bike. Um, even though, yes, it is a cruiser, it's not as fast as sport bikes. You don't have to comment that. I know, because everybody here is going to get butt hurt because I'm talking about how a cruiser is pretty good on performance. But realistically, like, it was, it was pretty quick. They make a lot of torque. Damn, I cannot wait to get this bike fixed. This thing is so fucking cool. This is hands down like 
I've, I haven't even gotten over 40 miles an hour on this bike for as long as I've owned it. And it's already just one of the most impressive bikes I've ridden. Now, I'm gonna let all these cars go. Well, never mind, there's somebody behind me. I've actually ridden on a bike. I genuinely miss it. I just forgot how much freedom comes with being on two wheels. One of the things that everybody in the world wants, like even if you don't even have to say it, just deep down inside, it is everybody's passion just to be free and to be able to do whatever they want and not be told what to do. When you're on a bike, that's pretty much how it is. And yes, I do still have the Eclipse. Hi. Nice to see you, Gary. I'll work on you sometime, maybe. Right now, I'm gonna be working on this bike, getting it up to speed, because this is gonna be a simple fix. That Eclipse, on the other hand, is a little bit more complicated, something I'm unfamiliar with. It just needs a lot of turbo stuff done that I don't know about. We made it home successfully. Hell yeah. unbox some stuff what we working with today so one of the things i got is actually a motorcycle jack i've never used one of these things before so i'm pretty excited to check it out but eh, god i don't know how much i'm gonna have to assemble this thing damn i have to assemble it a good bit all right well we'll do that in a second one of the things we're going to be doing is also changing the oil in this bike because i don't know the last time it was changed and anytime you get a new vehicle no matter what it is you should always change the oil or any other fluid so we got a k and air filter we're going to throw in there also interesting enough on these bikes they actually make an oil change kit with oem oil so that way you don't have to worry about how much oil you're buying and it comes with a filter it's just good to go oh shit i left this recording yeah I forgot. Oh well. Anyways, since this camera's on, we didn't do anything yet but just assemble the jack and I'm sweating my ass off already. Anyways, so far what we have done is literally just assemble the motorcycle jack. That, I will let you guys know, it's on Amazon. It's like 170 bucks. It is cheap, but it's one of the suitable options, I guess. Really, it's not cheap. Everything's sturdy. It's all strong. Really, the one thing that you're going to run into, for example, like this is the lock and it has the line up on the side right here so that way it can lock properly but it was just it was bent in so it took me probably like 30 minutes to finally just bend it until i could finally get it to a point where it would lock on its own so what we're doing today on the highball we are going to be doing an oil change and air filter rear seat and pegs and then also the bolts for the rear sprocket that you guys already know is an issue those will be coming in in the next week and we'll be getting that done last so let's go ahead and get started with this super sweaty process so now first things first we gotta start taking this thing apart i'm not doing the oil and air filter yet i don't know how to get to the air filter we'll do that in a second you can even do it with it on the ground but what we are going to do is go ahead and install these rear pegs because that's just pretty much straightforward bolts so these should be able to just pop off yep so it looks like it's held on with uh one allen it's not even tight all right one bolt out Look straight up yep we'll just set this over here wow that's an odd size there we go maybe this had a back seat on it at one point and somebody just took it off you never know wow interesting so this piece right here is nothing but a cover for the fender itself i don't even know if this holds the fender on and before we do anything else, of course, got to clean this thing off. By the way, if you guys don't know, you can actually go to Wax Gods, which is the products I'm using right now to clean this. You can go to their website, use the code Zorby, and you will actually get quite a surprise. Interesting. I am 90% sure that they go here. But which bolts are? All right, well, those do go in there. And this hole is fucking covered in dirt. Damn. Let's go ahead and get this seat on since I know it takes these bolts. Come on, get in there. Next side. And that's pretty much it. It's just those four bolts and you tighten it down. 
good on that one. Honestly, that's a pretty nice fit. Now let's go ahead and get these pegs. This one's, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. This one's gunked up a little bit, so give it a shot. I'll just hand tighten it. Where did my extension go? I had an extension just now and it's gone. Here it is. Uh, I don't really like the way that feels. Honestly, this one might just be dirty. Might just have to deal with it. Yeah, and there we go. Now we have pegs. And they're honestly pretty nice. I got these on eBay with the back seat. It was a pair for like 120 bucks. This is a real nice powder coated finish. The seat's in pretty good condition. I'm pretty happy with that. If I'm not mistaken, these bikes actually don't come with a rear seat. I've seen a lot of pictures online and every picture I found has always been the single seater motorcycle. But victory being victory, same as Polaris, they always have add-ons for their stuff. Oh, this side's going way smoother than the other side. All right, tight enough. And bam, we now have pegs on it and a rear seat. That's pretty dope. Now we can go ahead and put the side covers back on. This one was for this side. And bam, now we got the pegs on and the rear seat. What's up? What's good? Hell yeah. We still gotta do that oil change, air filter. That air filter is gonna be interesting because I've never ever messed with an air filter on a bike. So this would be my first time. I wonder if I got to take the gas tank off. Let's find out. Ooh, this looks like a cover. Yup, these three bolts and then it comes up and I can replace it. So let's just give it a shot. Sometimes the best way to learn is just to dive in and force yourself to. Everybody that asks how to do it, honestly, I just tell them to do it. Come on. Mmm. Ba-bam. I'm pretty sure that's one thing that majority of people just neglect is air filters on everything. Mm. All right. All three bolts are the same. Let's see what this does. Yeah. Wow, that is heavy. I'm going to just put this thing back on the ground for now. Because I don't want to get stuck with this bitch in the air. I have just decided that I'm not going to look up instructions. I'm going to just figure this out. And depending on how it goes is how you guys are going to get to see this shit happen. So before I pull the gas tank off, I'm going to take off this little plastic cover on the side just to be safe to make sure that it's not a cat to the air filter because I would feel really stupid if I pulled the gas tank off and I didn't have to. So I'm going to just look at all other options first. Where am I? Screwdriver. Here we go. All right, let's check this side and just see. And what you know, that's the, wow, it's a good thing I ordered an air filter. That is a very disgusting air filter. Interesting air box. It really is. This is sealing grease. You're supposed to stick this on here, and I have a feeling this is going to be messy. It says to apply it very liberally, so we're going we gonna to apply it liberally, and we're going to put some of this stuff on there. Now i got to just stick this on there. Oh, this is gross. Oh, interesting. Let me take off the other side. So actually what just happened is that I took it off the wrong side. Mmm, and bam. But bam the air filter has been changed. It should run a little bit better because this air filter is disgusting. Look at this. Like, that's just straight up. That is pure neglect right there. It's so old that it's rusting. It's not even oiled. Well, we got everything wrapped up. We got it put back together. The seats are on, pegs are on. Everything is complete. All that's left is to do the bolts for the sprocket and change the oil. Now, one of the things that's quite interesting about this, I'm starting to realize it's a trend with Polaris, is that they really just want their stuff to be as easy as possible to work on. So if you pop this side cover off right here, you have these two Allens. This bigger one is actually the Allen that you use to take out the drain plug. So you pull this Allen out and it's going to be on this side towards the front but I'm gonna go around to the other side because it's easier to reach that way. Now this is actually going to be the only bolt underneath here that is facing down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and break it loose and then do everything else by hand. <clears throat> Whoever tightened it sure put it pretty tight. <clears throat> All right, and we're gonna go ahead and let it drain. Here we go. This bike actually holds four and a half quarts of oil. It is literally the same amount of oil that goes in the majority of cars. 
wow, these bikes hold a lot of oil. See if we can pick this up without spilling it. Eee. God dang, I got a pretty nice reflection in the oil. Barely full, right there, right at the tip. All right, well, let's get this uh, oil filter off. Cool, oil filter's not on super tight. And get it off by hand. Well, bam. Prime the oil filter slightly. Lube up this O-ring a little bit. Wipe your fingers on your jeans and stick on that new, nice, pretty, Polaris oil filter. Nope, that is not gonna work. Uh-oh, I don't know if I have a filter. Do I have a funnel that I can use? You gotta do what you gotta do. I, oh my gosh, it's close. Hopefully this shit don't spill. All right, one down, not dripping yet. Number two. I do think it is interesting that this bike takes semi-synthetic oil. Being made in 2014, honestly, I was kind of expecting it to be full synthetic, but nope. <laughs> Apparently, does not want to go on properly. There we go. All right, well, I'm gonna have to drop this down. If I'm gonna be cranking on it, I don't want that shit falling. Ooh. 22 is far too small. I don't know if I can get this off. Mm. All right, we getting it. Let's make sure this is all the way loose. So I'll go ahead and take this caliper off. Come on, axle's coming out eventually. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. There we go. That is fairly heavy for doing with one hand. To the shop. This is a reminder I'm the best you haven't heard yet. I'm subbing in and going over shit you haven't learned yet. A new professor, this is two semesters and a lesson. My students knew this shit, I'm doing worse than I expected. Back to chapter one, that's the basics. You cannot escape this, you stuck inside the matrix. Out in Hollywood, getting chased by some agents, saying they can.